consciousness is the one and only reality. All phenomena are formed of the same substance, vibrating at different rates. All is consciousness modified by belief. Out of consciousness I as man came, and to consciousness I as man return. In consciousness all states exist subjectively and are awakened to their objective existence by belief. The only thing that prevents us from making a successful subjective impression on one at a great distance or transforming there into here is our habit of regarding space as an obstacle. A friend a thousand miles away is rooted in your consciousness through your fixed ideas of him. To think of them and represent him to yourself inwardly in the state you desire him to be, confident that this subjective image is as true as though it were already objectified, awakens in him a corresponding state which he must objectify. The results will be as obvious as the cause was hidden. The subject will express the awakened state within him and remain unaware of the true cause of his action. Your illusion of free will is but ignorance of the causes which make you act. Prayers depend upon your attitude of mind for their success and not upon the attitude of the subject. The subject has no power to resist your controlled subjective ideals of him unless the state affirmed by you to be true of him is a state he is incapable of wishing as true of another. In that case it returns to you, the sender, and will realize itself in you. Provided the ideal is acceptable, success depends entirely on the operator, not upon the subject, who, like compass needles on your pivots, are quite indifferent as to what direction you choose to give them. If your fixed ideal is not subjectively accepted by the one toward whom it is directed, it rebounds to you from whom it came. Who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? I have been young and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. There shall no evil happen to the just. No thing befalls us that is not in the nature of ourselves. A person who directs a malicious thought to another will be injured by its rebound if he fails to get subconscious acceptance of the other. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. Furthermore, what you can wish and believe of another can be wished and believed of you, and you have no power to reject it if the one who desires it for you accepts it as true of you. The only power to reject a subjective word is to be incapable of wishing a similar state of another. To give presupposes the ability to receive. The possibility to impress an idea upon another mind presupposes the ability of that mind to receive that impression. Fools exploit the world. The, rise, the wise transfigure it. It is the highest wisdom to know that in the living universe there is no destiny other than that created out of the imagination of man. There is no influence outside of the mind of man. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Never accept as true of others what you would not want to be true of you. To awaken a state within another, it first must be awake within you. The state you would transmit to another can be transmitted only if it is believed by you. Therefore, to give is to receive. You cannot give what you do not have, and you have only what you believe. So to believe a state as true of another not only awakens that state within the other, but it makes it alive within you. You are what you believe. Give and ye shall receive, full measure, pressed down and running over. Giving is simply 
believing, for what you truly believe of others, you awaken within them. The vibratory state transmitted by your belief persists until it awakens its corresponding vibration in him of whom it is believed. But before it can be transmitted, it must first be awake within the consciousness of the transmitter. Whatsoever is awake within your consciousness, you are. Whether the belief pertains to self or another does not matter, for the believer is defined by the sum total of his beliefs or subconscious assumptions. As a man thinketh in his heart in the, in the deep subconscious of himself, so is he. Disregard appearances and subjectively affirm as true that which you wish to be true. This awakens in you the tone of the state affirmed, which in turn realizes itself in you and in the one to whom it is affirmed. Give and ye shall receive. Beliefs, beliefs invariably awaken what they affirm. The world is a mirror wherein everyone sees himself reflected. The objective world reflects the beliefs of the subjective mind. Some people are self-impressed best by visual images, others by mental sounds, and still others by mental actions. The form of mental activity which allows the whole power of your attention to be focused in one chosen direction is the one to cultivate until you can bring all to play on your objective at the same time. Should you have some difficulty in understanding the terms visual images, mental sounds, and mental actions, here is an illustration that should make their meaning clear. A imagines he sees a piece of music, knowing nothing at all about musical notations. The impression in his mind is a purely visual image. B imagines he sees the same piece, but he can read music and can imagine how it would sound when played on the piano. That imagination is mental sound. C also reads music and is a pianoist. As he reads, he imagines himself playing the piece. The imaginary action is mental action. The visual images, mental sounds, and mental actions are creations of your imagination, and though they appear to come from without, they actually come from within yourself. They move, they move as if moved by another, but are really launched by your own spirit from the magical storehouse of imagination. They are projected into space by the same vibratory law that governs the sending of a voice or picture. Speech and images are projected not as speech or images, but as vibratory correlates. Subjective mind vibrates according to the modifications it undergoes by the thought and feeling of the operator. The visible state created is the effect of the subjective vibrations. A feeling is always accompanied by a corresponding vibration that is a change in expression or sensation in the operator. There is no thought or feeling without expression. No matter how motionless you appear to be, if you reflect with any degree of intensity, there is always an execution of slight muscular movements. The eye, though shut, follows the movement of the imaginary objects, and the pupil is dilated or contracted according to the brightness or the remoteness of those objects. Respiration is accelerated or slowed according to the course of your thoughts. The muscles contract correspondingly to your mental movements. This change of vibration persists until it awakens a corresponding vibration in the subject, which vibration then expresses itself in a physical fact and the word was made flesh. Energy, as you see in the case of radio, is transmitted and received in a field, a place where changes in space occur. The field and the energy are one and inseparable. The field or subject becomes the embodiment of the word or energy received. The thinker and the thought, the operator and the subject, the energy and the field are one.